Uh, kicking off the new month of February now is the earnings season for the 2023 period, which is expected to impact uh, investor sentiments in the coming weeks. Putting all of this and more together on the show tonight is, of course, Mr. Johnson Chuku, uh, licensed dealer and the group CEO at Cowrie Asset Management. Good evening, uh, Mr. Johnson Chuku. I'm glad you can join us because everybody is watching football. So thank you for <laughs> taking the time uh, to talk to us. We're, we're leading, we're winning, Nigeria is winning. What do you make of the drivers of the uh, jumbo rally that we saw in January for listed equities? I, I think um, what we're witnessing uh, is that we are seeing a lot of exuberance in the market. Um, we saw a market gain uh, of about 37 percent um, in January, and then we've gained um, not to present this uh, past two, uh, two days of uh, first two days of February. So we at about 39.65 percent year to date gain. So, and if you look at um, the kind of gain uh, market rallies we witnessed, I think what can I summarize is that we, it's partly driven by exuberance. Now, do you, do you think the uh, market is uh, due for a correction? And because we saw a sell-off uh, last week, either Thursday or Friday, uh, but then market bounced back. So do you think that, you know, profit-taking, uh, what do you think could be on the horizon? No, the sell-off we actually for uh, this week, uh, I think on Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, where the market went negative. Um, uh, like I said, the market currently is, so some extent can be said to be driven by exuberance. So if the market is driven by exuberance, then it's possible that the market will witness some correction. Remember that last year the market gained 45.9%. Uh, uh, and this year so far, we, the market has gained 39.65%. So um, in effect, the market has gained more than 80% uh, in the last, uh, last 11 months, 12, 13 months of the year, last 13 months. So clearly, uh, that is not in tandem with the economic performance of the country, or even the performance of the companies that already uh, published their results. We've seen uh, performance that are marginal improvement for those that are record improvement. We've seen uh, some reporting losses, and uh, apart from the banks that seem to be uh, uh, enjoying a uh, tailwind effect of uh, NARA devaluation, many other sectors of the economy are going through some difficulties. So, which also says that their stock price that have gained so much may have disconnected, the performance of their stock may have disconnected from the performance of their, the underlying assets, that is underlying companies. Now, we've, you know, earnings season, I said, you've kicked off. We've got, um, in fact, this month, MPC. Um, does the, do you see the, the uh, whatever decision, I mean, it's expected, I think you're, we're expecting a rate hike. Does the market, does that impact the market? Does the market pay attention to what's going on with the Monetary Policy Committee? Yes, I, I believe so. Depending on how um, uh, how bullish uh, the Monetary Policy Committee is in terms of rate adjustment, if they are quite bullish with increasing rate, it will affect the market. If they are tepid in their rate increase, the market will ignore it. Uh, of course, you know, um, investors are looking for yield and they are looking for return on equities as, as compared to return on fixed income instruments. So if um, the monetary policy is quite bullish and increased rate by uh, multiple uh, um, basis points, then investors may switch their portfolios away from equities. But in the absence of such sharp increase, I think investors will remain in the equity space because so far the equity market uh, has outperformed every other uh, asset class in the country. Uh, granted that, like I said, uh, with their concerns, that uh, the current prices may not be reflective of the intrinsic value of some of these some of the quoted entities. Thank you for that. Yeah, some have, have, have echoed your thoughts. Um, what do you make of? I guess maybe we can look at a couple earnings. Uh, Boa Foods. I'm always interested to look at how companies in that consumer goods as well as food space are performing. That's food, and then maybe we can go to drink with uh, international breweries. Uh, we'll, we'll start with Boa Foods. What do you make of their performance? Well, I think um, uh, Boa Food, if you look at those that are published so far, um, seem to have um, uh, outperformed operators in that sector. Boa Food recorded a 74% increase in turnover. Uh, profit after, uh, before tax, uh, uh, before um, uh, adjusting for uh, exchange rate impact was over 200 billion. But unfortunately, uh, they suffered an exchange rate loss of more than 70 billion. Uh, which reduced their profit to just about 111 billion. 
uh, just about 22 percent gain uh, i mean increase compared to what they recorded the previous year but if you now compare to that to the likes of international breweries that recorded a negative uh, performance in terms of profitability or compare it to the likes of cabri because we, if you're talking of the food and beverage sector uh, cabri also recorded a negative uh, performance um so and if you even look at flames flames profit was marginally uh, was a marginal profit. So, Boa cement, Boa sugar, or Boa food that recorded over 100 billion, uh, seem to uh, clearly have actually performed, uh, performed the, the, that sector of operators. All right, and then uh, on the other side, international breweries, I mean, the breweries, they've, they've faced some headwinds uh, in the past. Well, what do you make of, uh, of them? Well, you know, um, we used to say that uh, when the economy is. Uh, uh, um, is, is growing you know, it's performing well, people drink to celebrate, and when the economy is doing badly, people drink to uh, drive away their, their sorrows. But, but it looks like that uh, saying is no longer a truism, because now people are now going to churches and mosques to uh, pray to God to pray away their sorrows instead of drinking. And that's what is reflected in the performance of the bravery uh, operators. Like I said earlier, the Internet Bravery recorded um, a loss um, from the report they just published. Uh, and I, I think that is already showing across many, many consumer goods, and it possibly I think it may reflect in the performance of other other breweries that will come to the market, that will publish their results. Thank you for that. I really want to pick your brain on your outlook on the banks and you know what we've seen with the CBN uh, guidelines. You know the net open positions to try to stop speculation on FX and then the IMT. I mean, we've seen some sell-offs though in banks. Are we not on the exchange? How are you seeing that impacting banks going forward? I think um, it will not materially affect the banks. Um, the banks have very robust balance sheets. We're talking about banks that have balance sheets thrown into trillions of naira, and most importantly, the banks are also very uh, good in managing their uh, treasury activities. Uh, their open position limits, the central bank said their short open position limit should not be more than 20%, and the long open position limit should not be more than 0%. But I'm scared in my mind that the banks will sell, uh, if assuming they are having positive open position, which most of them are maintaining, which is also why they are reporting uh, huge uh, um, exchange gains from their assets. They will only switch their, those uh, assets uh, into classes that will uh, make sure they don't breach the open position limit. I also think the way the central bank went about it, it does not speak well of uh, economic management. You don't tell the banks to unwind their open position in a single day, in 24 hours. I think that was quite harsh. Uh, but it also, such a harsh directive will compel uh, operators to do things that you may consider as unethical. For instance, many Nigerian banks have offshore subsidiaries. You don't really have the possibility that they sell those um, uh, currency positions to the offshore subsidiaries and then uh, comply when in actual fact they are, those assets are still held directly by them. Thank you so much for that. Um, on the, I mean, we saw the, just to talk about the exchange rate, we did see it, I guess, marginally ex appreciate on the parallel market. I mean, it was about 15, 1,500 levels yesterday coming down a bit about 1,390 or so, 1,004. Um, what, what, uh, what do you make of the outlook for the, for the currency, I guess, going forward? Are we still in a price discovery mode? Yes, you know, Rotus, the reality about um, uh, your currency appreciating is that it must uh, be driven by supply. Um, what we are looking at is what you call flash uh, drop of a uh, flash gain of uh, Nile against the uh, foreign currencies. It is not sustained by consistent flow of capital. So assuming in reality that um, the banks actually offloaded their foreign currency positions to the local markets. Um, and then uh, traders, people who need the dollars to import goods, or those who have unmade demand, who have been struggling to get their dollar, buy up those things and make their remittances. What follows next is that the next day, uh, available supply will go back to what it was before. Because as long as it's not a flow, you cannot have sustainable market gear, price gain uh, based on a one-off uh, directive uh, that forced out um, liquidity into the market on a temporary basis. So I think the outlook for Naira is still um, uncertain or relatively weak, unless we have an improvement in uh, inflows 
from our export earnings um, uh, and clear the areas of um, futures and forward that have matured. Uh, one of uh, events or directives like this uh, will only inject liquidity on a temporary basis, and what that liquidity is mobbed up, the market will go back to where it was. And finally, sir, your I guess your outlook for the market, I mean, we're at almost 40% year to date, and it's only February. We did 45 last year. What's your outlook for the NGX as we um, move, move forward through 2024? I believe the markets uh, will at some point uh, call it, uh, depending on how the, money, uh, the monetary authorities uh, the kind of measure they take uh, as it relates to interest rates. Uh, if they keep rates uh, artificially low as it is now, then we should expect any moderation to be marginal, to be largely driven by the uh, reports or results of com other companies. Uh, some of the results are going to give you uh, um, price earnings multiples of thousands um, uh, in, 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 in large, in huge uh, number because of the weak earnings compared to the current prices or any ratio that are not uh, commensurate with the current prices. So uh, that might lead investors to begin to uh, appreciate that they may not get the kind of dividend yield that they expected from the holding these stocks. So they, that, in that case, they begin to lock in their capital gain, and that will lead to market moderation. Um, so I think at some point, with the kind of market activity we've seen this year, 39.65% uh, by 2nd of February, the market will at some point during the year adjust. Uh, Mr. Johnson Chuku, Group Chief Executive Officer of Kari Asset Management, always, always, always a pleasure uh, speaking to you about the markets. Thank you so much for your time.